Well, good afternoon, uh, Jim. Thank you for joining me for afternoon tea. That's a pleasure. Uh, my first question to you is, what was your childhood like? Um, on the whole, very, very happy. Um, it didn't have a, a terribly good start. My uh, paternal father left when I was four um, and um, I didn't speak for six weeks. Uh, I had to be medicated. So that was not the greatest of starts. But um, then things panned out and I had really quite a happy childhood. You know, we, we've got friends that, that went to the same school that was literally... 10 yards away um it was a really nice community lots of kids could play out in the street you know so long as you came home for your dinner and your tea you know you didn't have to you you know that was it that was just the guidelines mm. you know um and we had to stick to round the block we couldn't venture yeah. from round the block but we used to play out all day all day long on our bikes and scooters and roller skates and Really, we had the most fa fabulous time. You know, we, we weren't restricted at all. No, no. Uh, so whatever came our way, came our way. We fell out of a tree, we fell out of a tree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was, um, it was great, really. Yeah, it yeah. was. It was, yeah. it was lovely, really. Yes, yes. And did you have any yeah. siblings? Yes, I've got three brothers. Um, one older than me and two younger than me and when my youngest brother was born i was at junior school and it was in the winter his birthday is december the third and um our junior school was um just up the road from the infant school mm. and we were going to the infant school for something i can't remember what and as I passed our house, the bedroom light was on. And I said to my friend, oh, I bet my mum's having, having the baby. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, she was. And um, it was another boy. And apparently, well, I can remember saying to her, mom, what did you do that for? I wanted a girl. What did you do, <laughs> what did you do that for? I was really put out. Um, so, yeah, three brothers. Yeah, yeah. So you'd have, you'd have loved another sister, but... Oh, I would have loved to have a sister, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And um, did you enjoy school? Um, no, not really. Um, not really. I wasn't particularly academic. Um, I, I enjoyed English. I loved English and drama. And geography particularly, I, I enjoyed. But that was about it. <laughs> um so no i wasn't i wasn't particularly academic i think a lot then actually hinged on the teacher you had yeah i mean um our english us and i think that goes an awful lot towards whether you enjoy your school or not yeah um yeah. but um but yes i i was i was really eager to leave really mm. eager yeah so mm. i left school at 15. You left school at 15. Yeah. Um, so your favourite su subjects then were English, drama and geography. Yeah. And were there any problems at school or was it just that you didn't like it? Uh, I just didn't like it. Mm. Yeah. I, I, like I say I wasn't, I wasn't particularly academic um, and I just wanted to go into hairdressing. That was it. Mm -hmm. um, so I left school on the Friday and I started full-time work on the Tuesday. I couldn't go on the Monday because they were closed. So, <laughs> so I started full-time work on the Tuesday and I've been in full-time employment ever since. So, yeah. Oh. So you, you left school, you didn't go into further education, you just went straight into full-time employment. Mm -hmm. As a hairdresser or sleeping? as an apprentice, apprentice. yeah, and um, yeah, passed my qualifications. And it was about three and a half years in, I think. Then I um, I wanted to do a beautician course, and so I went to what was then the Solihull Tech. <laughs> so uh, I did a beautician's course there, 
um, but was slightly gutted because then, I mean, this is going back years now, it's like another lifetime ago, really. Um, but uh, then, you know, the only openings were in London. And the thought of having to go and live in London filled me with complete horror because I was home bird, really, still am, to be fair. Um, so I went back into hairdressing for a while and then I went to college, uh, back to college to do um, shorthand typing course and an English GCSE exam because I didn't have any qualifications from school. So I passed all of those and then I went to work for a solicitor in Solihull and um, and then that sort of mapped out an awful lot of my working life really, uh, conveyancing, conveyancing legal secretary, yeah. And then you went back into beauty with traffic. Yes, I did. Yes. In between yeah. times. Yeah. In between times, I, because um, I've been always been really interested in holistic therapies. And so I did, um, I did an Indian head massage course, uh, reflexology and baby massage course, uh, which I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed. And I actually set up my own little business called Baby Bliss. And it was to um, teach parents um, how to massage their babies, to calm them and to, uh, it's, it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. Relaxes them and um, gives the parents a good night's sleep other than the baby. Yeah. And, um, and I was doing great. And I, I'd had four couples um and and the courses were for four weeks so i'd had four couples and then uh my darling dad was diagnosed with cancer and um mom mom really needed some help she couldn't cope so that was the end of that so <laughs> that came to a bit of an abrupt end mm -hmm. um yes and then i retired when i was 63. Mm. Uh, my husband had retired uh, in the April and it was a bit like a green light to me. Well, they, this is it now, you know, I'm, I'm going to just, just chuck in the towel. So I, um, I retired in the May when I was 63 and um, the first 12 months were absolutely fabulous. Mm -hmm. You know, it's great and you can do what you want when you want breakfast when you want and and particularly that the first winter oh I love so love that not having to get up in the pitch black and <laughs> it was so nice just to have that little lie in yeah. but then I I started to get itchy feet and um and I wanted something else to, to do um and I wanted interaction you know I, I, I missed missed that you know, with the clients and whoever else on the phone. Um, so uh, my friend uh, mentioned Tropic to me mm. and Tropic uh, is a skincare company, Regenda. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and just so you know what it is, it's, it's a skincare company. And uh, so I went to this meeting in Chester and I was, I was hooked because it ticked all the boxes for me. It was going back to doing something I really loved and meeting people at the same time. So yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, and um, I believe this is the one that uh, Alan Sugar has got a, um, an invested interest in. That's right, that's right, yeah. It was yeah. in uh, 2007 and um, uh, Susie Marr appeared on The Apprentice, 2007, 2011, they appeared um, on The Apprentice and um, she didn't win, but Alan Sugar was really quite taken with her uh, and her work ethics um, and particularly uh, his wife. Lady Anne really liked the products, so I think that swayed his his judgment. Yeah. And um, yeah, he's still 50-50 partner. Yeah, 
Yeah. Um, and that that's great. And um, yeah, he makes he makes his appearances, and um, it's always lovely to see him. Yeah. So you've actually met Sir Alan Sugar. Well, I haven't personally met him, but oh. I've been in the same huge hall as him. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yes, yeah. very interesting chap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'd, lo I'd love to interview him one of the days, but. Uh... <laughs> It, you know what you see is what you get yeah he's just i i just think he's lovely really yeah. um you know i don't don't see that there's any side to him he's just a man that's worked yeah got and uh mm -hmm. and he's really quite passionate about business and creating that's a new that. business yeah that's that that's yeah. that so what would you say to somebody that is using a different product? Because there's loads of products on the market. Mm. Um, loads of um, different um, network marketing companies that say the same sales spiel mm. about their product. Obviously, yeah. 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 So how would you deal with that i uh i would say that for me there's a lot more to the product than the actual product mm -hmm. there's a lot more that happens be behind the scenes there's mm. a lot more that um susie ma um uh is passionate about other than the product but um I, I think i think you know everybody has has the choice to to want to but i think unless you try you'll never know mm. and and there's always the 30 money day get money um, back guarantee anyway mm. if you're not entirely happy so it's a bit of a win-win really mm -hmm. Uh, but it's it's natural and it's uh, there are no chemicals or preservatives, no toxic chemicals at all. Mm. Some of and hormone disruptors. So why would you want to put those on your skin? Mm. Uh, they're animal friendly, not mm -hmm. tested on animals any way, shape, or form. Mm. Uh, right from beginning to end, they're not tested at mm. all on animals. They're gluten free. Um, they're beautiful. They're, they're they're freshly made down in Surrey every day. Mm. So whenever you you receive a, a tropic product, it's no more than fourteen days old from being whipped up mm. in the beauty kitchen in Surrey. And I think it's the only English made company, isn't it? Well, there are other there are other companies that are out there, mm. um, but but she has such a tremendous ethos, and I think that was one of the things that that I found really inspiring. Mm. Um, she always gives back, you know, wherever she she um, leaves her footprint, she's always giving back. Mm. And uh, uh, Tropic are partnered with United World Schools. And they fund school children from some of the remotest parts of these countries to an education. And I had an, an email today, actually, that said that we've now actually, up to date, uh, given 14,634 children a full year of education. And every £50 that's spent on Tropic products uh, goes towards that 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 mm. that pays for a child's education for a day mm. so she's always thinking about giving back and and nearer to home you know closer to home um we're involved with the trust of trust and lots of other little charities um that um tropic support on an annual basis mm -hmm. they, they swap them about but they're yeah. always supporting mm -hmm charities here too so that for me is lovely yeah you won't you won't see tropic advertised anywhere no. because they don't they don't uh pay for advertising at all mm. um so 
you know, things that do appear in glossy magazines are uh, bloggers uh, or people who have try, you know, tried the products, beauty, beauty editors and things like that. And that's lovely to see that, mm. they're, you know, they're actually, um, they are out there yeah. uh, for everyone to see, but they don't spend money on advertising yeah. and that money is spent on much better things so far mm. as I'm concerned. Yeah. Yeah. And has the pandemic affected your business? Because, I mean, there's a lot of businesses that have been affected yeah. by the pandemic. Yeah. So has your business been affected? Um, I think I think that's... Uh, you probably get varied, uh, varied answers on that. Mm. To, uh, about Tropic. It's certainly been a challenge. Uh, because of course now everything is online and um, you can't have those one-to-ones you know because it's such a sensory product you know to smell it and to feel it and um, you know that that's a big chunk of uh, of tropic that's missing so far as I'm concerned but you know it's um, it's out there it's on zoom it's you know we can still have our little get-togethers and um, and enjoy enjoy each other and enjoy the, the products at the same time but it's mm -hmm. for me you know i can't wait to be able to you know to to to, to have that one-to-one -one, really mm -hmm. um but but yes and um it's been slightly di difficult at times with um with getting um products you know for 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 um for the skincare, you know, particularly uh, the packaging and things like that, that's delayed in mm -hmm. the making. But um, generally, yeah, we've we've managed to work our way around it, and um, yes, it's still it's thriving. It's thriving. Brilliant. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. So, is it just skincare that you do, or do you do makeup as well? Yeah, we do mineral makeup too, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's a, it's a great range really great range so it's head to toe beauty really there's something for every bit of us and uh, there's a, a, a men's skincare range as well um but having said that all the products uh, are unisex mm -hmm. you know and they're great for the kids too you know mm -hmm. um they're kind and gentle mm -hmm. you've got a okay. sensitive skin as well there are mm. certain products that are great for, for that so it covers all bases really okay so is there anything about your life that you would change looking back over it to where you are today is there anything that you would have changed um i always think that's a bit of a difficult question really because um yeah uh, uh you are who you are aren't you and um i haven't made well errors but I think I, I think you're incredibly fortunate if you go through your life um, and not make any any errors other than my uh, my older brother and my dad always used to say to me that if he fell off the top of Rackham's he'd fall into a new suit <laughs> you, never see, you never seem to you know put a foot wrong um, but yeah I, I no I think I think I think you could always say, well, I, I, you know, I could have done this or I could have done that. It's at the time, isn't yeah. it? You know, and that's all you can do. Yeah. You do what you think's right at the time, and whether it's the right thing or the wrong thing. Hindsight is a wonderful thing, isn't it? But, that's you know, I, I, you know I, I don't think I would specifically say I would change this, that or the other. Uh -huh. No. So how can anyone on the broadcast or listening to the recording help you? Well, I'm just itching to meet more people and to be able to have little chats about skincare, um, just to, to benefit them really, if they've got any queries about skincare or something that, that they can't seem to come to terms with, then I, I would love to be able to, um, to have that chat. And uh, if you know of any brides that are getting married, oh, I'd so love to uh, 
have a one-to-one -one with the bride. <laughs> because uh, I think that, you know, again, they've had a bit of a raw deal, haven't they? They've either had to postpone it once or twice or, and then now it's still not, you know, it's very small gatherings and right. things like that. So to have a glowing skin on your, on your wedding day, that would just be fab. So okay. yeah, I am anybody, I'll, I'll talk to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And if people need help, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, they can email me or um, visit my, my uh, June Tropic site and um, yeah, take it from there. Yeah, okay. it's fine. Yeah. Okay. Is there any questions? No, I'm very no. impressed. Very impressed, June, with your, with your work very <laughs> much. And uh, with your hairdressing, you're not going to go back to hairdressing, are you? No. No. Okay. Uh, not now. No, no. I'm too old in the tooth. A few years ago, um, I did uh, find out about, it was when, well, I missed the boat really, but you know, now you can, you can, uh, hairdressers offer this walk-in service where you can just walk in, have your hair cut. And mm. I thought, do you know what? That, that's a really good idea. If I rented a chair somewhere, uh, that's a really good idea because lots of people don't want to mess about, do they? They just want to go in, have the haircut and come back out. Uh, but to do a refresher course, and this is going back, oh, years now, was £4,000. And I thought, nah, no, nah, I don't think I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so no, no. But so the interest is still there. Mm -hmm. I used to love to colour my hair when I was younger and I used to, oh, I used to have all colours, all the colours and um, I'd love to be able to do that now because you reach a certain age and you can't do that. But I think it would be great to have hair, you know, was it Cindy or Barbie where you could pull it out, pull her hair out. Yeah. How amazing would that be? You know, <laughs> one week you could be pink, pull it out, cut it off. Next week, you could be bright, I don't know, scarlet blue or uh, blue or whatever. Um, yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah, gone are those days, I'm afraid. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> when I was hairdressing one time, I had uh, shoulder length auburn hair. And I decided I wanted to go bleach blonde. And it took three loads of bleach to get the, the carrot out of my hair. By which time my hair had gone like cotton wool. It was so spongy and awful that I had to have this crew cut. And when I got home, uh, I walked into the house and mom was just walking across the hallway and she took one look at me and she said, oh my God, please tell me it's a wig. At which I said, no, it's not. And I burst into tears and flew up the stairs. <laughs> so, but yeah, all good fun. All good fun. <laughs> Have you got any questions, Topsy? I know you came in a bit late. I came, I came in oh. very late, so I, I didn't ask any questions because I didn't really hear an awful lot of what was being said. So, <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, it's nice to see you anyway. Thank you. We can always uh, catch up on the replay, Topsy. Um, That's what I was thinking. I'll, if you've I'll do got that. Any questions? You can always uh, contact you. Mm -hmm. Thank right, you. Sure. Thank you very much for joining me for afternoon tea today. Oh, that's been really nice. Thank you. It's, a, it's the first time I've um, I've done anything like this. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs>